Scorpion. Okay, so but yes, yeah. he is going to pick Scorpion. The classic matchup. Yeah. The, the ultimate classic matchup. So I'm assuming he's going to go Reborn. Last time that we saw him play, he went Reborn. But almost everybody's been going Reborn recently. Teleport cancels are a little bit too good to pass up, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I'm not going to lie. It would have been really sick if uh, they both had the classic costumes on. Oh, that would have been pretty tight. But I like I like their costumes in this game. They both look great. And you see uh, Scar backing up a little bit. Just wants uh, Buffalo to make a mistake as Buffalo does use Interactable to close the distance. Scar's going to punish him for it with this grab. Oh, gets Ooh. hit by wake up 4-3-4. Four, four. Well, I guess on his own wake up. It's not even really a mix-up, but I think he expected the throw. Oh, gets the shoulder tackle, pushing Scar towards the corner. Try to go for the big boot, but Scar delayed the wake up. Good oh. breakaway. Forcing, forcing Buffalo to use the breakaway. And no defensive meter now, which means this is going to be pretty good. Choose to switch sides with the spear ender. On the two for the hard knockdown. And oh, Ooh. wake up. Oh, this is, this is big. This means one more mix up. There is defensive bar available. Oh, oh no! Oh, good defense from Scar to recognize he went for the fatal oh, blow. Oh, he's still in there. He's still in there. And is there defensive bar? There is, but he keeps it unbreakable. Oh, he didn't spin his bar. Oh, he did, but I don't know if it would have worked. Oh, he oh. charges anyway! Uh, oh, bye, yo! It's supposed to be objective. I am, I am objective. I love Scar too, and I also really love Scorpion, believe it or not. My serious matches, like I said, have been so far been. Uh, Chris G's matches, but that was actually a great comeback. Nice Ooh. down two. He waited. Ooh, almost got the full conversion. Got the down one still, though. Gives you a little bit more advantage. Let's see uh, Buffalo trying to fight his way back. Gonna freeze him in the air. Get him into the corner. Not looking good for Scar. He needs to find a way out of there. Buffalo's playing all the pressure. That was the perfect yeah. option, but I think it's a forward throw. Yeah, it is a forward throw. So he's getting knocked down, but not out of the corner yet. And this is a classic, actually, of Buffalo that it sometimes has killed him, sometimes it's one for him. Down four into shoulder charge. Be careful. Right now, Scar's going to get the grab, deal some more damage here. Oh, he went over, but he, he, he recovers in time. Wow, gets hit by the last hit. Very weird. Just let go block a little bit too fast, I think. Plus on block and the oh. down one check. Whoa. Okay, Buffalo going up game one against Scar. Okay, I mean. I, I think we're going to see a switch. Uh, honestly, the uh, it's not to say that the Scorpion wasn't going to work, but I, I just, I don't know. His Sony is so good. It is. I mean. Uh, oh, he, wait. No, that, that no. was Buffalo. Oh, he's oh, going back he did. in. Okay, okay. He's in so the Scorpion. I wonder why. So Buffalo up one game. Against Scar, the combo breaker champion, and Scar going back in with Scorpion. But so far, it's been looking pretty good for Buffalo. Let's see how it goes. He gets hit by the meter burn portion, the amplified portion of the shoulder oh. charge. So far, that's how this match has been going. Scar's been getting hit by a lot of these extraneous little hits that, like, necessarily aren't mix ups, but they're just hitting. Jumps over the jab with the wrong way, oh. and that's going to be a huge punish. Oh, is he gonna go for it or is he gonna save it? So he's, much damage. Yeah, what? Me, yeah, oh, he saved it. it. He saved it. Yeah. He has hold down. Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe that was uh, an intentional setup, but he did not get the overhead afterwards. In fact, he's getting punished pretty heavy for it. Gonna go for the mix up afterwards. Could have done the two and two ender for the uh, crushing blow. I love that ender. Ooh, oh, jumps right <laughs> over it. Scar does have fatal blow available though, but Buffalo has a huge life lead right now. Oh, two one Ooh. two or something. One one. Oh, oh, the perfect the block! He's got to jump out of there. Oh, oh, and he gets the grab! Okay, okay. Three rounds straight now for Buffalo against Scar. He is on match point. What? I I didn't expect this. What? Oh, okay, okay. Good. good. Uh, that's an escape fail, too, so the crushing blow is loaded. Oh, great oh. wake up, too. That's going to be uh, just some screen carry. Not a ton of damage. But he's getting him close to the corner, which is where he wants to be. Nice wake-up jabs. We're starting to see that's like a way stronger option in this tournament. Yeah, Scar's going to be a lot blood. of damage. Crushing blood. And keep him in the corner. And the bleeding damage. Ooh, flawless black from flawless block from Buffalo. Yeah, the, the young kids can flawless block way better than we can. I don't know what it is, but <sighs> he's one of them. All right, he's going to get hit. Now, at this point, he's not looking good. So he's either he's got to win or he's got to hope that he at least eats a throw this game so that he gets rid of that uh, crushing blow. All right, take it, take it. Let it, let it crush and blow you. Yes. Okay. Uh. So that's actually really good for Buffalo because he was really down, and now he's not going to have it for the next game. Still match point, but Scar, I mean, we've seen a lot of comebacks so far in these, even in the past, like, four or five games. Plus on block. Nice throw, throw tech. Oh. oh Whips, and Buffalo's going to take full advantage of that. And Scar saving his defensive meter for the rollaway. Going to get the grab on Buffalo, put him towards the corner. 
Oh, oh again! Shoulder charge. Oh. Why does down for a shoulder charge work so well? Oh, the patience. He was waiting oh, for the back two. Oh, again. Again, those throw techs, those throw whiffs have been huge. And there's a pretty big life deficit. Oh, he got caught. Oh, another throw. Scar has fatal blow, but what's he going to do? Oh, delay the wake up. Oh, the no, tech. second throw. Is Buffalo going to be able to Down four shoulder charge. He's definitely going to do it. I feel it in my bones. Oh, he's definitely going to In my buffalo bones. Oh, oh no. The grab. That was a really far throw. All right, he's going to get a little bit of Oki off this. He's got to use it well. Oh, oh jump and three. And that's going to do it. Buffalo. Taking out Scar with the pop-off! That's right, there's some beef between these guys. There's some beef, so let me explain this. Let me explain this, right? When Buffalo beat Ninja Killer, right? Scar, he went on Twitter, he was like, Ooh. holy crap! Scar was on Twitter, right? He was saying, this is only because they went to first to two. He was basically implying that if this was first to three, Buffalo would not have beaten Ninja Killer, right? Buffalo, he was in there, he was like, why are you talking shit about me? Why are you doing this? And Star's like, you know, I don't even want to talk to you. And he blocks him, right? So these guys, they have some real beef. And he had a lot to prove right there. Uh, that was a really serious pop. Feels like we're already in top eight because we've seen all these amazing matchups uh, coming uh, down to the uh, wire. And we have. It's happening. It's happening. Finally, live, offline, in a major tournament setting here at CEO 2019, the second stop on the Pro Competition Tour, brought to you by Roadrunner. Sonic Fox versus Ninja Killer, the most infamous internet warrior that has ever existed, ever. All right, and they're just going right in, starting off with a very smart block and punished by Ninja Killer. This is, this is the match that everybody's been most anticipating the entire tournament. Everybody oh. looking for it. That's going to be the crushing blow from the throw. And Ninja Killer making quick moves here. Going right for the throws into the double bicycle kick amplified. We're probably not going to see it in this round, but he's holding on to it for the next one. Yeah, he's got such a life lead right now. He's so in control. The fourth throw does get pretty good. Oki to Cassie, but disrespecting with the down three. No punish on the low stance out of the Shaolin stance. And great decision there to go for the throw, but Sonic Fox all over it, able to react and tech the correct way. Not sure which way Ninja Killer gave it to him, but I know it was correctly anticipated. All right, and this life lead is slowly, slowly getting back to Sonic Fox. Nice block, no punish on the low fireball, though. Oh, there's a Whoa. low fireball again for your troubles there. All right, so it's just a great way to just keep yeah, your opponent back. It is. It is a great, like, footsies check, especially against the character that's footsies are so good. But Ninja Killer, he was looking so good at the start of the first round, and then now Sonic Fox, he's looking, he's like, he's kind of, like, re-adapting. You know, he's getting a little bit closer. He's getting the knockdown. Quarter positioning is good. Now, the interesting thing about Ninja Killer's play style is he doesn't ever usually go for those wake-ups. He likes to reserve his meter for the rolls a lot, and I want to see if Sonic Fox catches onto that and starts punishing all those advancements. And right now, it looks like Sonic Fox is going for a, uh, a more defensive option. Nice, gets punished. Flying Kick is a very, very good punish on those low shots. Anybody who's got a fast forward fencing move, and there it is again. There it is again. Sonic Fox needs to be a little bit careful here when to do this. He's got to be a little bit outside of that punishment range. That's going to be zero on block. Both players can move at exactly the same exact frame. Ooh, this is so close. Oh, oh is that enough? I think that's got to be it. What a conversion. What a hit confirm. Not only did he just not hit confirm on the first one, able to recognize the second one, continue the string going, and then go right into that fatal blow. Fatal blow is ready to go. Yeah, gotta watch out. He was so sure. That was so good. And a very, very fast first match. Two rounds straight, and we are seeing the switch back to Cassie. Now, we see a lot of the time Sonic going with the other variation with Yas Queen of uh, Cassie because he doesn't like the fact that you can, I believe it's because you can punish uh, so easily as Jackie. Uh, you can punish the low shots, but you can do the same exact thing with Lou, so I'm surprised we're not seeing the same thing. And the last time we saw these two play in the online tournament, the online NA East tournament, he also chose Yes Queen, which he didn't the first round of this. So let's see, yeah, Sonic Fox this time oh, sticking it out with wow. Digital sh Soldier, so not changing the variations. We're going to see the exact same move list here on Gathy Cage. Just a little bit of, you know, some time to get back. But right now, Ninja Killer not trying to miss a beat here. Escape failed there by uh, Ninja Killer as he teched the incorrect way. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's getting punished for low shots so, so much right now. And this is really unfortunate for him. Okay, getting carried to the wall, getting the knockdown. What's the Oki going to be? A jump over is very surprising from Ninja Killer. Getting stuck in the corner, and this should be, oh, no, breakaway. Yeah, that's going to be a breakaway there. And again, just kind of want to, you don't want to give your opponent too much credit here. Great tech. Oh, space a little bit of meter. Thought that was going to full connect. Didn't quite. I think he was crouching low when he got hit. Oh, that's the crushing blow. Counter hit. Punish only. 
Yes, yes it does. Oh, big, big uh, check there with the elbow right to the gut, and he drops the oh, last little no. bit of combo. Oh, it's not chip yet? Okay, but does manage to get it. Wow, that one was actually a counter in that minus situation, so that was just a little bit of a late poke by Ninja Killer. Our first round taken by Sonic. Oh, look at that. Yeah, he's kind of testing Ninja Killer there. He really to kind of just throw out that stagger and see what he's going to do once he blocks that first hit there. And again, Sonic Ooh. Fox, that's what he was looking for the first time. He was looking for Liu Kang to start poking right back. Yeah, it's, it's such a safe option. I mean, you just, you know, if something happens, you get a lot of reward. If nothing happens, you're still good. Oh, he drops the combo! Unfortunate for Sonic oh. Fox! The huge execution error cost him both his defensive bars. So if Ninja Killer opens him up again, he's going to make sure it hurts. All right, corner position is really good. Oh, no, it was! Actually, back throw is a really bad situation because you don't get any Oki, but now he's back in the corner. He's okay. Oh! And oh! Okay, I don't think that's enough. I my brain says no, but my heart says maybe. I don't think that's enough either. I believe he would need around 41%. This little punch here at the end, only going to do a little bit more damage there. Oh, but this is a scary zoning situation. Oh, wow, just gets hit by the fireball. All right, match one Ninja Killer. Ninja Killer was able to close it out one fireball at a time. Did not panic, kept the composure here. Ninja Killer looking to fulfill this prophecy that has been bestowed upon him. But Sonic Fox says, no, I'm the greatest fighting game player that has ever existed. Oh, this is this is a lot to prove for both players, to be 100% honest. But a huge life lead so far to Sonic Fox this time. He's ending in the air gunshot enters just to knock him far away and get a little bit more of a zoning advantage. Oh, a little bit of a cancel here, but wasn't ready for the challenge that Sonic Fox presented to him. Oh, misses the anti-air, and the interactable is going to be it. Sonic Fox taking game two. This is, of course, going to game three. There's no other way this could be. It has to. It has to go to game three. It has to go to the final round. Let's see these guys just go at it. Two Titans finally meeting in and out. This is what you have to keep in mind. This is Sonic Fox's realm. There's like 500 people, 5,000 people, 50,000 people on each side of this fight saying, oh, of course Sonic Fox is going to win. Oh, of course Ninja Kill is going to win. But honestly, I have no idea. I, I could not call it. Both those players are playing so great those first two games on either side. It's been very close. However, I think Ninja Killer is feeling very comfortable. He knows he can do it. And here we go. What a conversion here. Going to bicycle kick amplify Double. two times here. Now he's got to amplify it one more time to get that crushing flow ready to go. Oh, that 1-1-1 one, one, one wasn't safe. But oh, he gets missed. He must have mistimed that. Must have. And now he's, the, oh, OK, the drop. But the throw is going to mean match point for Ninja Killer in game three right now. This is very, very scary for Sonic Fox because he knows Ninja Killer is just one amplification for that bicycle kick to get that crushing blow ready to go. And that crushing blow really, really hurts. Great oh. patience here. Yeah, the zoning game, this match is going back and forth between zoning and rushdown, but the zoning is very even because they both have low fireball. Yeah, very like parallel fight here. You know, both, both these characters really throw the projectile, and both these characters can definitely slug it out when they decide to go in. Great down four from Sonic Fox. Doesn't get much out of it, but Ooh. does get the opening here. No, the throw is Oh, what a great whiff punish. That was just barely a whiff. Leaving him in a standing position, taking away those wake up options. No up twos or up threes here. And again, the interactable. You got to watch out. That thing acts like a throw, but it is able to be comboed into there. All right. Last round. Match point, both players. Positioning is definitely in favor of Sonic Fox, but we've seen that can switch so quickly. Definitely can, definitely can. Just one back throw away, oh. but that is a big crushing blow here. It's gonna hurt. But Ninja Killer's got something ready to go on his end once he just opens him up twice. Oh no, he away. didn't even amplify it. That's so smart. This life lead is definitely running away for Sonic Fox. He's got the corner positioning, he's got the life lead. He's gonna get a nice little hit off of that. Another one. Oh, he's so much damage. This is almost definitely guaranteed chip, and that's gonna be it. Sonic Fox in the final round taking it to Ninja Killer. Yes, it came down to that. Very calculated by Sonic Fox. There we go. There <laughs> There's we always go. somebody's question, everybody. But this is a very, very interesting uh, matchup here. And the reason why it's interesting is, wait, is this really? I mean, this makes sense, but is Combat playing Garrus? Uh, I've never, I don't feel like I've ever seen his Garrus. I'm not sure. Combat was sitting on the player one side, so yeah, it could yeah. make sense. We have been seeing Tweety, I mean, Rocky, yeah. and Jackie Briggs for most of the weekend. I also feel like Tweety would never pick Garrus against a Jackie when he could instead go with a different character. I don't think he likes that matchup at all. But uh, I'm more so just interested in Combat's playing Garrus. Now, this is interesting because exactly what I just said. Tweety wouldn't like this matchup. Let's see how it goes the other way around. 
Yeah, let's see. I mean, if you don't like something, that's usually s some validity to it. So possibly Tweety knowing something that Combat is overlooking here, especially considering the fact that Combat is not a Gearus name. But right now, Tweety making real work of those ribs on Gearus as he is going right into the ribs here of Oh, nice stop one or down two. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, that stopped it. The anti-air, universal anti-air from everyone. Not, you know, invulnerable in any way, but you have to be on point and ready to go once you see your opponent's feet leave the ground. Yeah, especially against a great jump in like Garrus's, but all right, fighting out of the corner. Come out at a pretty heavy lead, but once he got cornered, that's just where it ended. And that's kind of how it tends to happen against Jackie. Not too surprising, but uh, just gotta stay out of that corner. Easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely easier said than done. A great down two. However, wasn't countering anything for that, that crushing blow. Oh, misses the sand drop there, or the teleport here from Kiris. Going over to the other side. No counter hit, so we're not seeing a crushing blow. And Tweedy ready to press buttons on that wake up. Very quick buttons at anti air. Yeah, the standing one from Jackie on wake up has happened in almost every single Jackie match that we've seen. It's a super common strategy, and people need to be ready for it. Oh, there, there it is, is again. <laughs> Stand one ones. All right, th that's an interesting uh, cash out right there. Now, you are going to get a lot of damage. You're going to essentially one mix up away, but Jackie doesn't get any Oki off of the fatal blow. So uh, you're only getting to about even life. And I yeah, the option's still there. Fatal Blow's still there for combat. So you're, you're in a pretty scary situation. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say not only that, but you're putting combat in under 30 health and giving him access to that Fatal Blow. But now that both those Fatal Blows have been cashed in on, no longer going to be a factor here in the final round. Once those Fatal Blows connect, they are gone. Right. For the entirety of that match. That's honestly, I mean, they both have great Fatal Blows, but there might be a little bit better of a situation for Jackie. Just because, I mean, the Fatal Blow from Garrus is one of the best in the game. Probably the best in the game. I mean, it's got great combo ability. Doesn't scale too hard. And the fact that it reaches from that far is insane. You can really use it in so many different situations. Great interrupt here from Tweety reacting to the big fist charge from combat. Yeah, that was definitely a knowledge check right there. It's plus on block, but you can't interrupt it. It's just one of the mixes the character has. Throw counter. All right. If, if there's going to be a comeback, I think it needs to start now from combat. Oh, oh wow. For I'm the OS. Surprised that didn't hit. Yeah, so what he's doing there, he's putting in one option or putting in one input to cover multiple options there, but not sure what happened here. Combat just decided, let's get off of this character. This character is not for me. Keep in mind, guys, this is still a first to two setting. We don't kick in to first to three until the top eight of this tournament. So. This is do or die for combat here. The final character he picks is going to be the, the the last character he can possibly go to for this set. Yeah, and we've seen him use a lot of characters. We've seen him use Johnny Cage and Baraka and Raiden and honestly, just almost every single character that can rush down. We've seen Jax. Now, the thing here is that he just, I don't know if he ha really has like a comfortable choice against Jackie. I mean, we do know him essentially as a Johnny Cage main, right? But Jackie does force Johnny Cage to whiff. All right, I like to switch to Baraka. Baraka, a lot of people tend to kind of like this matchup just because at the very least, uh, if you can get out of the pressure of Jackie, you're getting a lot of reward for it as this Baraka, as Marauder. Yes, yes, Marauder does do a lot of damage thanks to that variation specific ability, the gutted ability or the gutted special move that just pops your opponent up for a full combo. And if you get that crushing blow, it's going to be even more damage, close to 50% after the DOT or the damage uh, uh, damage over time. All right, well, uh, definitely Tweety taking this first lead, knocking all the way to the corner, goes for just two knees. Now, Tweety very familiar with Baraka. We saw him playing a lot of Baraka at the Summit of Time and, you know, of course, during the beta uh, when we only had five characters to pick. So Tweety very familiar with what this character is capable of. Oh, and definitely got a break away there. Now, one more mix-up is going to mean everything. Now, that's essentially how this character works. He gets one launch, you have to break away or you're going to die. And then he, if he gets one more launch, then you essentially die. But right now, it's not looking like it's going to be an issue. The throw is going to push it to match point for Tweety. No pain, Tweety in complete no control, pain. man. That was pure domination. However, he did take some hits. Tweety Force. still felt like he was in the driver's seat the whole time. The big jumping attack there from downtown, just reaching out with that arm and making sure it connects into a full combo, forcing combat to come off that breakaway, Ooh. come off those two bars. And this is really running away for Tweety. He's got corner pressure. He's got such a huge life lead. Heavy read on that down, too. But Okay, this is going to at least interrupt the momentum, right? It's going to be a lot of damage. It's going to be a knockdown. It's going to be like, okay, hold on. Now, I'm He's, got the the flag buff. Buff. He's got the flag buff here. It is active, just like the regular flag. Normally, however, it does go away very quickly. 
at Tweedy just trying to end this right here. He doesn't have to worry about Fatal Blow anymore. He just has to worry about this last little 17% down. Oh. Nothing here is oh. combat on life support. And that's Tweety it. connects it. Tweedy connects it perfectly with that back to the mid that really just yeah. stops your opponent. And Tweedy screaming, yes. You but now that he's had so much to prove, I mean, he's got a little bit more. And he's just got to win one more match against Foxy Grandpa. I don't know what his Lao experience is like. Let's see. I don't know what anyone's Lao experience is like. I mean, Foxy Grandpa, clearly the Lao master. No question about it after this weekend here. A lot of throw escapes here now. The crushing blow requirement no longer fulfilled. And so looks like he's looking for them. They're looking to tech that back throw over and over again. And this time, yes, again, Buffalo scared of that crushing blow here. Oh, this is gonna be so much damage here. Foxy Grandpa looking great, and that is not the punish Buffalo definitely wants. But here we go. Okay, this okay. could be the start of it. The momentum could start right here. Okay, he's went for the normal combo. Chose not to spend any of his resources or go for the Vortex, uh, interestingly enough. But Foxy waking with that up three and taking the first game very convincingly. First round very convincingly, round I'd say. Two. But uh, it's just a lot of the Z hat stuff. Like, if you can figure, oh wow, he's he's airborne, he's airborne. Okay, he knows, he knows, he knows he's airborne. Oh, oh, what a great punish! He knew Foxy was gonna wake up with that. Kung Lao does have a very good up three. It hits a little bit higher, so you gotta specifically look out for it. And he is just in the blender right now, getting mixed over and over again. And Buffalo resorting not to do it. Foxy Grandpa, I feel like with a flawless, a flawless. So we almost had a flawless from Foxy round one, and then. I almost called him th that other name, but Buffalo was a flawless <laughs> round two. If he makes top eight, I said I would call him. I would call him that name. So it'll be at the end of this set, if anything. Hey, I'm calling him daddy right now because I'm calling it Buffalo looking incredible here, riding this momentum against Foxy Grandpa. And he knows, if, 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 if Buffalo knows anything, he knows how to shut down Maniac play here. What a punish. Of course, that overhead string completed is very, very unsafe from Sub-Zero. So that's why most players usually look for the low. Oh, that's a great punish on the jump over. That's gonna be a lot of damage. Not gonna go into Fatal Blow, but it's still available from both players. Oh, stuffs it! Oh, oh jumps over, over it, not to win yet. Oh, but he's in chip situation. And he's Buffalo's got, got one more amplified. There it is. Oh, there it throws is. him. Is that enough? That's it is. Enough. Buffalo taking game number one just barely. Incredible there. He just had that one amplified ice ball and somehow just made it connect. It is so fast. And that's specific to this variation. The variation that every other Sub-Zero does not play. Buffalo. Always, always about the mix, always about, I mean, it's just, it's so great to be able to shut down projectiles, not only just projectiles, but anything your opponent wants to do at full screen. All right, so game number two is still two out of three. Landing the first throw. Sub-Zero fourth throw, granting good Oki. Oh, nice roll through, but he doesn't commit to the string, so he's gonna get a nice little punish. Nice little shoulder check there. Great down two from Foxy Grandpa. Oh, great into a conversion. Great, great conversion there. The Z hat for the plus frames, and that's going to be a big punish. Buffalo waking up with that one two and getting that hit confirmed from the ice ball. Checking him over and over again. No punish from Foxy Grandpa, but hold on. A little counter from Buffalo getting a little too antsy. Yeah, there's a, a, a few different situations there. The Buffalo just barely misread or missed time, and he's paid for it. It with his entire life bar. That life lead was so significant, but it just ran away. I mean, they'll start off with trying to punish 2 1, 2 1, 2 1, 2, but uh, just barely mistimed it. Looking for that full screen amplified ice ball there, but Foxy being a little smart there. Not a counter hit. Looks like Foxy was trying to jump uh, out of there and not press the button. Great throw escape and a great check with that down three. I don't know what Buffalo's pressing, but it's not the option he should be looking for. Oh, wake up down one works and he lands the overhead. He's going to get the side switch, not using any more meter. Actually, doesn't have any more meter, but he's leaving little hits here and there. Nice duck, but not a full punish. And the down two crushing blow is going to be enough with a second down two match point for Buffalo. Buffalo keeping it nice and simple. I love that. Wanted to end the round as quickly as possible and not leave it to any kind of chance of execution. The overhead Buffalo is in there right now. Who said you could react to this every time? Who said it? <laughs> Who said it? <laughs> Certainly not Foxy, but right now Foxy's got the advantage. He's got the Oki. He makes another correct read. The breakaway's happening, but the plus frames are still there. Oh, that's going to connect out of the air. He's going to get the side switch. He needs to keep him in the corner for pretty much the rest of this game. 
No, he doesn't have much to play with. Foxy Grandpa with the jump, no throw here. It's so scary, mixing it up so perfectly. Kong Lao's mids complement the throw game so well, and that's why Foxy Grandpa is one of the best. But this is a scary situation. The threat of either 50-50 into Fatal Blow is always there, but that throw, is that enough? Yes, it is. It is, all right. Foxy Grandpa taking game number two with the Brutal. Making a statement here, just making a huge mess on the floor of Buffalo Sub-Zero, and he's got to be feeling a certain way about it. Foxy Grandpa showing that he's not going to let that first game shake him. Going to stay calm, going to stay perfectly poised. Yeah, his, his mix-ups between, I mean, it's, it's such a, so clear to say he's got so many mix-ups, but he mix -ups, mixes up better than almost any other character just between throw and strike because he gets himself so many plus frames with the amplified Z hat over and over and over and over, and then he walks up, and the big mix-up is, is he going to throw you? Is he going to forward four? That's pretty much been it the entire time, but he gets a lot of reward off of both, and then he gets to set up another Z hat, and it continues. And so uh, it it's really is, in a weird way, a very mix-up heavy match between two characters that mix up very different but here we go. One of these two is going to qualify for top eight winners. And a wake up down two again. It just keeps working. And Buffalo switched over to the other variation. What? Interesting Wait, choice yeah. here. So now the main difference with this variation is that he has access to his base move of slide. Slide that hits like a low. However, he's giving up that amplified ice ball that won him the game in game number one. I'm not sure if I agree with this at all. Well, I mean, he's got to know something. Wow, that was a bad hit confirm, but he's going to stay safe for it. Oh, jumping in, stopping Foxy Grandpa from going anywhere. And Foxy Grandpa looking for the punish, confirming that it wasn't going to connect the rest of the way. Great choice here. The Z hat for the plus frames. Great block by Buffalo and great throw tech afterwards. Oh, what a good whip punish with the slide. He's one away now. Is this going to cash it. in? Okay, no. he's not going to take it until he needs to. Unless that was three. It might have been the third one. I'm not sure. Or maybe, maybe. I don't know. It's always so hard to follow. But all right, throw's going to connect. You've seen a lot of good techs, but this one is working. And that might have been a throw that failed. Oh, that should be the conversion for it. No, no, no. He's still good. Oh! Checking with a fatal blow after being minus on block. Had there been a down one out there, he might have been stuffed. But he made the correct read. And now we're going to match point for Foxy Grandpa. Interesting, interesting choice, especially because I feel like Foxy Grandpa is one of those players I haven't really seen go right into the fatal blow as much as these other players. He wants to just kind of keep it to throws and, of course, wants to see the brutality over and over again. And where is... <laughs> All right, so he's saving. He's definitely saving at this point. Yes, at this point, 100% saving it. Doesn't want to cash in just yet on that 30-plus percent. Great up three by Foxy Grandpa taking advantage here of the plus frame. Oh, no, defense immediately. This is so much damage. Look at this. Into the forward four, and that's going to be it. Foxy Grandpa qualifying for winners. Top eight to take on tweets. Daddy going down to the lower bracket. So for all you daddy fans out there, don't worry. He's still in the tournament, but Foxy Grandpa solidifying his dominance here. I mean, patience carries through no matter what type of game it is. So that's just one of the most important things that you can have as a skill in fighting games in general, right? In life in general. But these guys, they, uh, they definitely show it. And their composure also. The, the highest composure maybe of any players that we've, we've seen in all of NRS history. Like these guys, they can be down, uh, you know, final hit, final round. They've won no rounds in the Golden entire set, Khan and they'll make you come back and they'll be like, yeah, dead. you know, just normal. Takata can just know the Emperor. History indicates you cannot. Round one. And on top of that, I think these players have both played these characters throughout the entire tournament. So completely uh, dedicated to who they're using. Yes, Loyal is through and through. A great forward four here by DJT. Now he is playing Baraka, who a lot of people feel like isn't as a mobile as most of the other cast. So sometimes it's a little tough to get in on characters like Cetrion, especially considering she's got that teleport. For one bar, she can teleport not only behind her opponent, but a little bit farther away so that she doesn't get punished. Yeah, yeah, totally unpunishable, especially by Baraka. So, I mean, really, DJT, all he can do is make every little opportunity that he gets count. Otherwise, I mean, he's going to take a lot of guaranteed chips from zoning. There's really no way around it. Great block there by DJT. Does give him the opening for, you know, to limit a little bit of real estate from Dragon as he tries to close the gap here, fighting back with a little projectile of his own, the Blade Spark. Uh, here is DJT. He's one fatal blow away from winning right here, though, and he's got it available. Nice tech. Sure, if it's gonna be enough, there it is, the big oh. wall and the down two, not fast enough to anti-air Cetrion in that situation, and Dragon setting the tone and taking the first round. 
If he just used Fatal Blow to anti air right there, he two, definitely could have five. taken it. But he thought the down two would be fast enough. It's a great anti air, but it just hit it a little slow. Yeah, just a tiny little bit, but that's okay. DJT keeping his composure, trying to find his way in little by little, step by step, and that's gonna be a big whiffer right in front of Cetrion, and that's gonna lead to a big wow. crushing blow and a big, big combo here. 41%, now that's gotta hurt. I'm super surprised that we didn't see uh, DJT use a breakaway right there. He has most defensive bar, and that's pretty much the only time you really need to break away to avoid massive damage from Cetrion. She doesn't get that much damage normally. Hold on, we've got the Amplified gutted, and there it is on Q Dragon using that breakaway. So DJT looking to open him up one more time before he gets those two bars back. You know, we see the progression of the bars there on inside the bar in the gray, and that's going to be almost enough. Oh, no, that move is so tough to hold down, and that's why Dragon is using it, because if he completes it, he gets away from the punishable state in case his opponent does that forward roll. So DJT needs to rethink his game plan, rethink what he's gonna do on wake up. Yeah, it was such a safe option, because even if he blocked, it hits so many times that it completely gets rid of last breaths. It just hits like four or five times in a row, just boom, 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 just melts you down, right? So it would have been guaranteed chip. There was almost no real good way to escape. He being patient, not really swinging, even when Cetrion is negative, just kind of waiting for his turn, waiting for that opening. Great flawless block there, the boulder, and great patience to not jump into that anti-air boulder, which is what Dragon was looking for, and the big boots that jump in, one of the hardest jump ins to anti-air in this entire game. Oh yeah, I mean, the best option you've got really is trying to make it with, but uh, from a close range, sometimes you just gotta hold it. Yeah, I definitely do. Sometimes you just gotta hold it and be at Baraka's mercy, but Dragon's got one of the best defense uh, abilities from any any player in the NRS. Oh, he's taking so much chip from zoning right now, though. I mean, each of those bullets is plus range and zoning. And again, okay, you've got to break away this time. You've got it. Thank you. Thank you. And that's safe on block. Oh, he's getting a little bit of chip himself. It's pretty hard to punish, but it is unsafe. Yes, unsafe if you know which interval he's going to stop and dragon on match set point here. And top eight point, technically, he could move on. Again, the winner of this fight, Sonic Fox. Oh, checking the boulders here. A little bit of a sun ray from uh, Cetrion. Oh, just takes the knockdown, not gonna take the full conversion. But now he's actually pressuring a lot in the corner, which is something we've seen a lot from Dragon in the past. He really likes to hold his corner position. Yes, yes, he does. Keeping him there, checking DJT to see if he was doing anything besides blocking there on that wake up. Wow, and look at this. He's playing this entire match in this corner. He just has to find a way out, or this is gonna look really bad for him. Oh, oh that's a good start. It. Fatal blow, connects from anywhere, mid-screen or in the corner. It is just fine. It's gonna be doing nearly 50%, I believe around 45%. Yeah, and that's the only option that this variation has to actually combo up forward, 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 crushing blow. Oh no, he got hit by it. He really did that life and the brutal! I didn't even know that was a brutal! Existed perfectly. That was the first boulder that, the first anti air boulder that Dragon successfully hit on DJT. And what a closer to that set. Dragon gonna be moving on to top eight to face Sonic Fox, the NRS classic here. Wait, this is uh, this is pretty exciting. I mean, we're moving really fast through this, but this is again, like I said, another match to make losers top eight now. And we are seeing, of course, the matchup that we expected to see. Starting off strong from Buffalo, gonna get a strong hit, lots of corner carry, and he is gonna move back to that dead of winter variation that we're so used to seeing him use. I, that's, this is the Buffalo I like seeing. I like seeing the fact that he's using this variation. I feel like he's made it his own, and this is what he's most comfortable with. That is gonna be a counter crushing blow on that very unsafe. Overhead starting string, not really sure what Silver I was trying to press there. Possibly uh, delay wake up into buttons, but hold on, that's gonna be a punish. Not cashing in on the crushing blow instead. Gonna set up those amplified bicycle kicks for the bicycle kick crushing blow. Yeah, and look at this, it's likely slow and going back towards Silver Rye. That's a great whip punish. He's gonna go for the full crushing blow, and he can confirm into fatal blow. That is going to be it. Round one going to Silver Eye. I think it's it, right? It's oh, very, very wait, close. Right? Uh, I no, think this not. is it. I think this is it. That thing it did is, not is. scale at all. Yeah, yeah. 47% 
all because he got punished with that forward 4-3. But let's Continue talk about resources, right? Now, that crushing blow and the fatal blow are both off the table. And, I mean, he needs to use them. It was absolutely worth it. But at the very least, you can look at that as Buffalo and say, hey, now I'm a lot more risk-free. Yes, there you go. Not going to do so much damage whenever I do get wrong uh, with that overhead. And that's I, I feel like that's what Buffalo should be going for now. Meeting him there with a the safe string, checking him with a down one. Oh, and down four in the shoulder was actually legit this time. It actually juggled. Hey, man, I don't want to hear that. It's legit all the time. <laughs> People love to poke it's back. It's legit 0% of the time. It's, I'm never going to give him that. No, never. It's legit. It's legit. We've seen it hit. A lot of people like to poke after that down four. <laughs> it is very legit. I mean, down one and down, po any down pokes in the specials are quite good in this game, to be honest. Just not a lot of people have fast enough mid specials to make it work. That's a block. No punish. Very surprising. I thought that timing was perfect. I thought it was too, but Silver Eye must have been just a little too slow at the helm here. The down four does go into a hit, and Buffalo finds it as his opening for a clean jump in. But Silver Eye looking to throw him back, keep him away, try to zone him there. And Buffalo had the right idea there, try to shut off that zoning by just going with the amplified ice ball. Yeah, nice read on the throw. He did catch him with a jump kick. Didn't get a full conversion. Again, he's going to get a lot of damage off of it this time because the flying kick, one hit away. But, oh, that's a punish. He tried it. He tried the risk. Now Silver Eye going up game number one. Surprisingly enough, we didn't see Buffalo go for the fatal blow. I mean, he could have, in that situation, instead of just canceling the charge, just gone into straight into fatal blow, and it would have been a higher reward and uh, maybe slightly less risk, just because it's a little bit harder to punish it. But Silver Eye now is one game away from thinking it's a top eight losers. Well, I feel like what Buffalo was thinking there was he would have a little bit more mix-up in case that shoulder did get blocked. Sometimes people wait for the amplification. Yeah, true, true. So, you know, he got to have more of a mix up there where a fatal blow it's very clear when you block a fatal blow and usually a lot easier to punish but we're three three here from silver eye and buffalo with the correct challenge knowing that that is not a plus on block or even zero so many down pokes being traded right now finally the first big conversion being from silver eye but i mean buffalo has poked him so much that like half of his life is gone just off little hits oh did he actually flawless block that that was weird looking that was a little strange there. I saw a little flash of a flawless block, possibly here. And the forward throw keeping Buffalo, or I'm sorry, Daddy, in the corner. Yes, I'm going to call him that. Got to do the man's wishes here. Jumping out here is Daddy, looking for the back 3-2. But no one was home. And Silver Eye on point, blocking his toes. No punish of that fireball, oh, but oh. hold on. <laughs> That's it, that's the exact situation I was talking about. Now, this is not going to be enough damage. We are one mix-up away still, and now that Fatal Blow is off the table for the rest of the match. What's the mix-up? Nice! Jumps over the wake-up, up three. If that was an up two, it might have worked. Round two. But Fight. one round is game two going to Buffalo. Getting the forward throw here. That's got such great Oki, the ability to just Get and stay in throw range after that successful throw. That's going to be a big punish. Going to go for one amplification here. I lost track of how many amplified bicycle kicks, but I'm sure Silver Eye knows right in his head. Great flawless block here from Buffalo, able to poke back with so much breathing room. Looking for the overhead, but doesn't get anything. I love the stagger. I love the idea. And the back three, two. Buffalo finding the hit, forcing Silver Eye to come off the bar. Going for interactables and justice, two boys. Yeah, I don't know if that was intentional, but it did make the overhead safe no matter what. All right, throw's coming. What's the Oki? Oh, oh poking nice. with the down three. This is going to be unfortunate for Buffalo as it leads into a crushing blow. 31%. The trade not in his favor. That's unsafe, and that's the round for sure. What a huge risk. I mean, we have seen the Buffalo super not afraid to take risks, but now this is match point for Silver Eye, and so many of these rounds have been won because he's taken a risk. It's been blocked, and he's been punished. Oh, checking him there. Silver Eye correctly confirming that the success of that fireball hit him and gave him the hit advantage. For something here, oh, getting Buffalo to move. The stagger so tough to account for, and that's going to convert with a great side switch here from Buffalo. The jump in punch just to make it a little easier to execute. Wake but hold up, on. Throw. The savagery from he, Silver Eye. He did throw him out of the corner though. So, oh, okay, trade. That was weird. That was weird. There's definitely a chance here. 
This is so intense here. It's so scary. And when you're at the helm of that forward 4-3 from Liu Kang, you just don't know how he's going to do it. The air to air, but no confirming to anything else. Silver Eye one hit away from taking this over Daddy, and he does. Getting the low fireball, whipping out that wake up, and waking up against Liu Kang is one of the most dangerous things you can do, especially when he's got that parry ready to go. Silver Eye feeling himself right now. Now, it's really interesting because you were talking about how, uh, you know, he doesn't particularly like using Garrus against certain small hitbox characters, but actually the real advantage here, I think, is the other way around. Now, Combat is almost 100%, you could say he's a Johnny Cage main. He plays sure. a million characters, but his Johnny is the best, I would say, maybe in the world. Possibly. There's a lot we haven't seen, but so far from what we've seen. Now, he only likes playing the, th the same way, right? Only against larger hitbox characters because he doesn't like the whiz from Johnny, but he always gets to play it against Garrus, so that's why he has such a high success rate against Garrus's. Yes, and especially against Gurr, because this is Gurr's main character here. Checking those uh, the fireballs there, keeping the combo going, and launching him up after that nut punch. Ooh. That's going to be a very unsafe nut punch there from combat. Not sure if that was an execution error or a miss. Hit confirm here. The overhead going to lead into the crushing blow. Going to break the back and wow. a few ribs there inside that Johnny Cage torso. And that is already running that damage back super, super close. Uh, oh, all right, one more, one or two more hits, and you're going to bring combat into that fatal blow range, which is way, way scarier with him than most other characters just because he's not up the fatal blow, but the fact he's getting the cancel so he does have the cancels now any single hit that he's got is uh, potentially gonna convert or be a lot scarier on block yes definitely gonna be scary on block you gotta watch out for it a little bit of a stagger here from Gurr not enough to get the round but what's gonna be for breakfast <laughs> he rolled right into his arms right into this throw throwing him now that wasn't a punish but combat definitely had the opportunity to either neutral duck or to check that throw there so he was just on edge, ready to not get punished. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much a 33, 33, 33 situation. That's a bad for in that situation. But hey, look at that. Gurr taking round one, and he was on the back foot a lot of that round. What a punish, whipping out that down two and having enough time to walk up with some of the best forward advancing mids and lows in this game, which is Johnny Cage's arsenal right here. He's really great at just shutting down and always, always taking his turn. Whether that's you getting checked with a down four or you trying to poke back with something. A little bit of a whiff there and combat tying it up here in this first game. Yeah, he, he just Funny didn't give Gurr a single Sit. opportunity that round. I mean, an all, one single opportunity was all it took in that last round. Beautiful down one anti-air, but the breakaway is going to prevent too much damage from coming out. And back to the corner you go. Nice kicks right to the face, launching him oh. up. Oh. Great recognition or anticipation of the breakaway, knowing that, hey, even if I can't combo him, I'm going to brass knuckle up. Now, what those brass knuckles do is they give Johnny Cage more chip damage across the board, not just with his hands, but also with his feet. He does kick way more in this game than other games. Yes, he does. Look at that. He's like 90% legs, man. Oh, Whoa. legs here. The John Claude Van Damme here. Popping off here. Going green. Showing off all the moves. And, of course, the patented Johnny Cage split there at the end in midair. Combat. Understanding. Yes, this is the right way to go. Mm -hmm. The one that's second-guessing himself right now is Gurr. Yeah. Do I go with Gears? Now, we couldn't see it on shot there, but I believe Gurr's assigned coach pretty much for the rest of his life is Coach Steve. His coach, yeah. He is the coach. Oh, look at that. Representing Noble, giving a nice shout-out to his sponsor on the stream. That's a, that's a good player. That's how you know you picked up the right player. When he's like, oh, look, I'm on stream for uh, 10 20 seconds, here we go, look at my sponsor. But uh, I mean, this has got to feel bad. I do have to say, this has got to feel bad. You know, anybody who comes from your local, you always want them to win. So the fact that they have to team kill from NLBC to see who makes it into losers top eight, I mean, one of them's going to be happy for the other, but the other one, I mean, it's, it's rough. You know, you hate to, to see your teammates go down, especially if it's your fault. Yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's locals being prideful of their locals. Nothing wrong with that at all. However, these guys are in it to win it. At the end of the day, this is a one-on-one -on -one scenario. This is not a team sport at all. This is all about the player. Great chuck of that plasma again, knocking him out of the air and being able to kind of continue the offense, continue the onslaught, and try to guess right on this opponent's wake up. 
And then, all right, getting out of the corner. This is, uh, this is really nice for Gur. He's going to have to take this advantage very, very strongly. All right, Oki and Oki. Got to guess right every time. Down one and a down one on Blanc. That is good. How did he almost convert that? Jumping over to the other side, kicking him right through, but it's okay. Gur getting that judo chop, crushing blow thanks to that counter or punish. Oh, that will <laughs> like, like, reach really, really far. But just going back to neutral here. Wow, didn't stay plus on that. Didn't spend the meter. Oh, Lucho, oh, I'm sorry, a jump back, but it wasn't oh. executed perfectly enough. The up two, probably the first time, and he went for the breakaway literally as soon as he possibly could, but Kerr was on top of it. The only way to stop a breakaway is to hit him with a fatal blow. But he's alive, he's alive. That skilled so much, but it doesn't matter. The Sand Trap is taking it, and on top of that, almost even better than winning the round, he's pushing the whole game back to mid-screen where he's going to be way more confident. And look at how slow that defensive meter builds up on combat side. He needs to wait so long for that breakaway to be accessible again. So Gur needs to find those hits and needs to make sure that they hurt. And this is yeah, gonna be the first one. Oh, no, didn't quite confirm it fully, but he's still gonna get a good amount of damage. Not the full, like, almost 400 that we usually see, though. Correct, correct. Now, Combat's breakaway is available again. So, Gur is going to be needing to find back-to-back -back, uh, situations uh, to get all that damage. Yeah, but just getting opened up by these, I mean, like, back and forth so many, so many times. Just got to stay patient. Of course, the plus frames are always what's scary. And being able to jail those, uh, those straight projectiles into a larger box character. That's why he likes it. Lands the cross up, makes up, but he's putting himself in the corner for it. He's gonna have to figure out a way to not let that happen. Oh no! And that should be it. Match point now for combat. Gur on life support. He, If he wants to stay in this tournament, he needs to win this round and continue to win this set. Getting clipped in the knee, not watching his toes, not blocking low. And the oh, nut punch, no. restand situation, susceptible to throws and having no access to any of those wake up attacks. No wake up roll, no wake up up two or up three. And that's a huge issue against this pressure of Johnny Cage, taking it back to mid screen. But again, defensive meter gone and there's a huge life lead, just needs one more conversion. Oh, didn't confirm, didn't believe it was going to connect. Instead, looking for some kind of stagger. Oh, a drop because he was airborne, and that is going to be all she wrote. Combat taking it over, Gur. 2 0 here, but what a game. And of course, make him watch. Make him watch the fatality over and over again. The longest, longest fatality in the game. But man, that's got to feel so bad. Gur, so close. I mean, that feels bad even just watching. You know, I'm always a fan. Everybody's always a fan of Gur. Maybe the most loved player in the entire community. But oh, close to that. After I was talking about Jackie, I uh, turned me into a liar. I guess there's a Sonya there, too. Could be a matchup specific thing. Maybe uh, Kevo Reborn wants to hit Baraka just as hard or not even harder but speaking of hard watch out for those ribs there as that second <laughs> ring going right into the crunching blow and it's all by itself and already starting off so so strong i mean getting some mix-ups about over over half-life actually he's gone on djt's side just more and more i mean he's patient but you can only be so patient against mix-ups nice interrupt on the ring this is going to be very high reward the breakaway almost definitely happening no wow choosing to save the defensive meter for the knockdown but look at that almost i mean Another half-life combo. This is a huge damage matchup. Well, what's so great about Sonya in this particular situation is the fact that she has the zoning options. That ring startup is very quick, and oh, she has the ability oh, no. for the don't drop. No, she doesn't have breakaway. Oh, no, drops the combo, but look at that. Two options and no punish. No punish. Don't drop, great last breath. Oh! Red. Good tech, good tech. That one whiffs, and the chop chop is enough. How many times is DJT gonna win on one HP? Chop Chop not gonna be affected by that last breath because of all those multiple hits on block here, ladies and gentlemen. It's just unreal how many times we've seen that happen. I mean, you look at this right now, it's like, okay, Kebo is, has an incredibly good start to this round, but if he gets DJT to one life, it's like, yeah, DJT's probably gonna win. I don't even understand how he does. He's so clutch even after he whiffed that fatal blow, but the fact that it means he still has it. And he might get to that life very, very soon. In fact, this throw is going to push him to it. Huge, huge life lead by Kevo. We 
We did see this last game, however, and you gotta stay, you have to keep in mind that DJT still has that fatal blow, but Kevo Demand or Kevo Reborn is not gonna give him the opportunity to do so. Just call him Kevo, just stick just to Kevo. Kevo. Easy peasy. Easy peasy, Kevo. Let's go. Hitting those blade sparks, getting hit by those stray ones here. Now, Baraka can contest with projectile. If, it's probably almost as fast, if not just as fast as uh, Sonya's uh, projectile. So these guys can go toe for toe here. Yeah, actually the fact that the crushing blow from the amplified ring was just happened the very, very first thing in the very first round is huge and it's great for DJT. And look at him for the first time taking a huge life lead. Let's see if Kevo has as much clutch factor as DJT. Yeah, let's Ooh. see. Oh, uh oh. Gotta be ready, gotta watch out. A big combo could come at any moment. Fatal Blow is ready to go. The throw escape, DJ sees again off me, but this is gonna hurt. No, he oh, drops no. the combo. What a heartbreaker, but he's not letting him stop it. Is he gonna punish? No, no punish. Oh, he had so many hits, but he wasn't confident in his mix-ups. He, he staggered the overhead like two or three times. He could have continued for a much, much larger combo, or he could have even committed even to even just like a Fatal Blow as a read, but you know, he just wasn't sure. And it's, it's fair because you look at DJT, one of the best defensive players. It's so hard to open him up that when you do open him up, you're like, wait, I open him up? And then you don't get a conversion, right? <laughs> it's just like you're in such disbelief that you open him up. But you know what? It was working. We saw it there and we saw them connecting. Uh, Kevo, Kevo reborn a little bit uh, a little bit off with that execution there at the end. It could have easily been his. And of course, if he continued the combo, he could have been just one mix up away mm -hmm. from, a, from a fatal blow combo. Yeah, and uh, I just saw a scorpion pick. But I, I did. I but don't know if that was intentional. That may have been. They did immediately go back. Yeah, they did immediately go back. Now, Kevo yeah, Reborn yeah. is free to kick any character as the loser of the first match and the loser of the second match are free to switch to other characters. However, the winner has to stay on the character that they just won from the previous game. Yeah, this is, I mean, honestly, it felt to me like Kevo won that last match because he was just so dominant in like so many of the rounds. But somehow, man, DJT, yeah. DJT yeah. makes miracles happen, man. It's Baraka. It is Baraka. You can just hear it every time Denzel does it, smiles, and does the chop chop for everyone's view and pleasure. And hey, he won another game with chop chop. <laughs> it just <laughs> keeps happening. But all right, so far, it's staying a lot more neutral at the start of this game. Uh, we've seen Kevo run away with the lead a lot, 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 but right now he's actually on the defensive. Oh, and that is going to be a big confirm here. Kevo, no, he drops out of the combo. DJT doing the forward four, that flying knee just a little too early. You hate to see that type of thing happen. Great up three, fully invulnerable, getting those blades right into the face of Sonya Blade. Oh, wow, that was a beautiful whip punish. Uh, to quote Ultra David, he said that may be the hardest thing to whiff punish in the game. He said it might be unwhiff punishable, but it was whiff punished. I'm not sure if it was on a whiff, but it, or like in, on reaction, but it did technically get whiff punished. It did, it did. It's tough, oh, man. No. Oh, very, no. Very, very little recovery there on the animation, but Kevo reborn, able to keep calm, not let DJT get in, because once Baraka gets in, he gets that second hit after you break away the first one, he's going to be doing so much damage thanks to that gutted ability of this variation. Yeah, and you almost have to save your meter for breakaways. Wow, that was beautiful. I'm surprised he didn't do up two, actually. He possibly didn't believe in the fact that he could have done it. Now, the up two is not invulnerable, so that could have been why he went with the up three instead. Uh, that, uh, that does make sense, but I mean, I think he could have punished it for a launch, but he was pretty low to the ground, so it was definitely the safer option. Uh, oh, nice, grabs out of the roll, and that's the start of something. He's gonna get a little bit of zoning check. But Kevo does not have the lead, so it, oh no, okay. The, the fireball advantage here is gonna be huge. Yeah, huge, gonna, huge, huge. It's gonna be close here, very, very close. Getting that forward four knee on the punish and confirming right into that amplified uh, uh, gutted. Right, and that means that now DJT is on match point to make it into top eight losers. But Kevo, he's had so many great rounds in this set. I definitely don't feel like it's over for sure. No, definitely not over. You can't say that. Kevo showing so much, so many signs of life here and just keeping DJT at bay. But right now, he's looking for that crushing blow, anything to give the life lead to him. And DJT being very calm because you know what? There's no meter build in this game from doing any moves, performing any strings or normal. It's all about time. Think of it more as a cooldown here. And a very strange little drop there from Kevo Reborn, dropping that drone closer. Oh, no.
nice catches with the full launcher. No breakaway from DJT. He's saving that defensive meter. Not sure if DJT was kind of playing the mind game there. Thought that maybe Kevo was going to drop the combo, anticipating DJT to use the breakaway. So it's like a counter to the counter. Oh! I don't know if it's going to be enough. It's going to be either. very close. It's always super close when it's just a little ridge. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm not making any calls. It looks like it might be. Oh, it no, hurts. no, 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 not enough. But all. All we need is a little bit chip, but this is where DJT's the scariest. Oh, oh, but he jumps into the projectile. We're going to game three. Keeping him out, Sick. just zoning projectiles after projectiles because he knew there was no reason for him to go for any kind of risky things because DJT was just going to be one hit away from taking the entire set. But now we're in a game three situation. Wow, Kevo really showing up this weekend. I love to see this. I love to see players that have done well in the past and we haven't seen for a while come back and say, hey, listen, I'm still great. I'm still super relevant. And hey, he's, he's Kevo Reborn now, right? This is this is Kevo Reborn. This is absolutely reborn into a fantastic player. I mean, no matter <laughs> what happens, into not saying that he wasn't know, a fantastic player. It's just player. how it sounded. Like I said, he's one majors, but that was just a very funny way to put it. But it's absolutely <laughs> true. Incredible! The fact that he's going to Game Three right now against DJT, the fact that he's already up over a head against Scar and Forever King, some of the players who, if people were to say that they won the tournament, nobody would be surprised. But he's back here and he's, he's showing what he's made of. Definitely showing what he's made of. Oh, getting checked there from those Baraka blades. The down forward uh, front punch here. Again, only accessible in this variation. He drops the combo, the forward for the flying knee, just a little too early. DJT. Yeah, he's going for those optimals every single time, even though he's dropped some of them. But so far, hey, it hasn't done been that bad for him. Oh, nice answer. He's still taking life lead really strong right here. And a little blade spark, but hold on. We got the elbow to the face into a big combo. Going to amplify it for the pop-up again. And we're not going to leave into any kind of restand state. Instead, we're going to go for damage here. Great jumping attempt here, but DJT ready with the anti-air, ready with the down two. Not going to get the punish on the fatal blow. But DJT just needs to make him block one thing. So yep. are we going to see a blade spark? No, not going to get the breathing room for it. Doesn't oh, get the no. cancel. He dropped oh! it. Oh! He just dashed up and did it. He just went for the fatal blow. Wow, he was... He had an opportunity. He dropped it. He knew... He knew that if he gave DJT one more second of time, DJT was going to close that out. He said, no, I got to do something right now. And he did it. Now match point for Kevo. Completely maniacal here. This is coming down to the wire. This is insanity here. Getting the sweep of one of the best sweeps in the game very fast and only negative two on block. So why not keep doing it, Baraka? And Ooh. what an interrupt there. Looking for the amplified shot was Kevo Report. But DJT says, no, I'm going to put a stop to that and I'm going to make sure this hurts. Getting rid of that breakaway there from Kevo, uh, Kevo Reborn. Has no defensive meter here. Jumping over the other side and DJT just trying to lunge out of there. And that low is so much less scary now because Fatal Blow is off the table. Uh, you're going to have to get some really actual true launches or maybe a lot of zoning hits. Oh, this is really good start. The Fatal Blow is available, but one more hit could be it. He lands the low, doesn't get the cancel, but he's going to close it out anyway. Kevin to man with the upset over DJT to make top eight loser.